Our next speaker is Dr. Sylvia Whitlock, the first ever woman to serve as the president of a Rotary Club in the world. She is the one who has made a landslide shift in the history of Rotary International. The story of her Rotary Club of Duarte, California, was dubbed the mouse that roared after it had won a rel relentless 11-year battle just 34 years ago on May 4, 1987, when the Supreme Court pronounced its historic verdict favoring women's admission into Rotary. Only in 1989, the late past president of Rotary International, Mr. Frank Devlin, gave a passionate speech at the Council of Legislation, and the representatives finally voted to accept women in Rotary. Today's Rotary is benefited by women at every leadership level. Sylvia believes that tomorrow keeps changing and considers herself a Rotary geek, serving humanitarian causes and encouraging absolutely everyone to become Rotarian. There everyone, Dr. Sylvia Whitlock, and the stage is for you. Good morning, and thank you for asking me to be a part of this really interesting conference. I've already learned so many things just listening. So we are on the edge of history. It used to be a tomorrow when the only thing we focused on was the eradication of polio, because you know it's endemic is only two places now, uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan. I have learned this year the major difference between pandemics and endemics. And now, tomorrow also, we're looking forward to the eradication of the coronavirus, or at least some kind of control over the coronavirus as it's playing out around the world. Well, back to Rotary. And I'll tell you how I got involved in Rotary. I went to work in 1976 as an elementary school principal in a little town called Duarte. Biggest businesses in the town were the school district, the Duarte Unified School District, and the City of Hope Cancer Hospital, a major cancer hospital. As I prepared to be a principal in this school, I thought I needed to talk with our superintendent to find out what kind of community this school was all about. And so I made an appointment to see Dr. Key. He also happened to be the president of the Rotary Club in Duarte. I went in to talk to Dr. Key and asked about the community. And he said, you don't need to worry about this community because we have a Rotary Club here. And I thought, okay, Rotary, uh, what is Rotary? I had never heard of Rotary. It was 1976. Rotary was one of the best kept secrets around. I had never heard of Rotary. What I knew about them could have been loosely written on the head of a pen. Well, I knew a little bit about Kiwanis. I had heard about Kiwanis. It's a name that you don't, uh, you know, just jump over. In fact, Kiwanis means waiting to get into Rotary. Well, maybe. But I also knew about Elks and I knew about Lions because the Lions Club provides eyeglasses for the kids in school. But I literally had never heard about Rotary. But I learned a lot then. I learned that in my district, in that Rotary Club, they were struggling to admit women. And so Dr. Key said to me, we're going to invite you to join the Rotary Club. And he said that advice because what had happened some short, short time before was that he thought, you know, I have principals in this district, school principals who are women. Rotary Clubs at that time was made up of CEOs, people who had major uh, positions in their 
communities or in their places of business, manager types. And he thought, I have psychologists, I have principals, I have journalists. Why can't I invite them to join Rotary? He had never seen any women in Rotary, but he thought he would check with the district governor and see could he invite these women. And so he went and he talked to the district governor, and I won't tell you the district governor's name because he didn't pass the four-way test. He said, I have major women who can join Rotary, and we have no women. Can I invite them? And the district governor said, I agree with you. I would go ahead and invite them. But when I enroll them in Rotary International, I would not use their full names. I would just use their initials. So I would enroll you as, oh, S. Whitlock, which could be Stephen Whitlock if somebody's trying to figure it out, or M. Elliot, could be Michael Elliot and not Mary Lou. He said, go ahead and do that. And so Dick thought, well, that's a good idea. So he invited us to join Rotary and he enrolled us using our initials. Well, of course, this didn't make a, a stir at international at all. So the women got involved in the community, doing work in the schools, reading with kids in the schools, uh, making Christmas with Santa Claus for kids in the community, Easter with the Easter Bunny and all the little things that Rotary does in a community. But they also got ready for their 25th anniversary party. And when there is an anniversary or any kind of milestone, Rotary likes to help clubs to recognize those milestones. And so Rotary sent representatives to Duarte to the 25th anniversary party. And while the representatives were there, the women were introduced to the consternation of the representatives. They thought, we don't have women in Rotary. Somebody said, this club has women in Rotary. Well, the Rotarians watched and listened carefully. And when they, they went back to Evanston, they reported that this little renegade club in Duarte thinks it has women in Rotary. Well, Rotary didn't lose any time in sending us a note that specified three things we needed to do. Number one, the women needed to be asked to leave because there were no women in Rotary. It was the number two thing, there are no women in Rotary. Women are not allowed. And number three, if the club did not ask the women to leave, it had to stop calling itself a Rotary Club. It could no longer call itself a Rotary Club. And so the club took a vote and decided that it would not ask the women to leave, that it asked to appeal to the board of directors. But I was told it couldn't appeal to the board of directors because only real Rotary Clubs can address the board. And, you know, it wasn't real as long as the women were members. Well, the club decided it would appeal to the Council on Legislation. It was a meeting that year in Tokyo. But an, a member was chosen to take the issue to the Council. We could talk to the Council. It was an interesting situation, however, in that when the issue came up for consideration, it was not whether the women should be permitted to be members, but whether the Rotary Club of Duarte had violated Rotary bylaws by inviting women in as members. And of course, the answer was clear. Die was cast. The vote against having the club retain its women was 1,000 to 34. There were 34 delegates who were sympathetic to the issue. And I met one of them in Calgary in the late 80s when the district, when the international convention was in Calgary. I was on a train riding into the convention center, and I was sitting across from a gentleman and his wife. Uh, who were all tagged as I was. I remember reading each other's tags, you know how you like to do that. And the gentleman said to me, Are you from Duarte, is that the club that tried to get women into Rotary? And I said, yes, and here we are. And he said, I was at the council legislation 
And I voted for women in voter. I don't care what the issue is. I voted for women in voter because I always thought they should be there. And his wife, who had been sitting quietly next to him, said, I didn't think so then, and I don't think so now. And I thought, why? And she said, because we have men going to rotary meetings at night, and we don't want them meeting with women and who knows what. And I said, you know, it's not a social club. It's a service club. We're concerned about doing things in the community. She didn't want to have her mind changed. However, the issue of the council on legislation turning down that first attempt, it wasn't new in the 1950s. In Detroit, a club in India had put an item to change the bylaws about women on the agenda, and it was defeated and the club didn't press it. But even more interesting, the first Rotary Constitution did not specify that Rotarians had to be men. It just said persons of good character. But that was a time when there were few women in the workaday world. Because men were the ones engaging in fellowship and business activities, the bylaws just evolved into men of good character. If I could ask Paul Harris a question, it would be, would you have intentionally excluded women from Rotary? Uh, Rotary International didn't like what he was doing, and so they sent a delegation to Duarte and asked the Duarte Club to surrender its charter, to give up its charter. If you're going to keep the women, you're no longer a Rotary Club, give up your charter. And we had to give up our charter. But Bill Brooks, who was a member of Rotary, said, oh, that's okay. We'll just call ourselves the ex-Rotary Club of Dwarley. And I'll show you what the, our pin looked like. We had Rotary pin with an X over it. And we became the ex-Rotary Club of Dwarley. And we were the ex-Rotary Club of Dwarley for 11 years. We had no charter. But a Rotarian attorney from a neighboring club said, I think we can take our case to the courts. And as we prepare to take it to California courts, Rotary petitioned that the case be heard in federal court, because as it said, not all members of the board of directors are Californians. But you see, there had been a precedent in the federal court where a New York club had been seeking exclusionary rights for private club membership. The federal court ruled that the case should be heard in a California court. It was first heard by the California Superior Court, which upheld the Rotary's right to expel the club. And so we were shocked. But the issue was, the problem really was, that when Dick took this action in Rotary, he was trying to increase membership in the club. By the time Rotary started to object, it was clearly identified as a civil rights issue. Well, the Superior Court uh, gave Rotary the right to expel the club. And so uh, Sanford said, we can appeal this. We can go to the Court of Appeals, but we have to have some substance behind our appeal. And he found out that in California, as in lots of places, maybe even in your countries, there are rules that ban discrimination in public accommodation. And Rotary was deemed to be a public accommodation because of its classified classification system. And 80% of its members at that time had their dues paid by their employers. So he went to the, this was the UNRU Act. He went to the appellate court with all the information from this. And that court reversed the Superior Court's ruling. But Rotary wasn't going to sit still for this. They immediately appealed to the California Supreme Court, but that court refused to hear the case, essentially affirming the decision of the appellate court. And, but that decision was only incumbent on California Rotary clubs, only California. And so we moved on. I was coming in to the district as uh, a president, and I was invited to attend pets, and I was encouraged in the postcard I got to bring my coat and tie because direct pictures would be taken. So I took my coat and tie, and I was the only woman there, one woman, 290 men. 
you know, there was an advantage to having that kind of uh, conflict proportion because when it came time to go to restrooms, there was nobody outside the women's restroom and long lines outside the men's restroom. So there was not even a female speaker and most of the men were cordial and friendly. So at the section on Rotary International, this is at the pets section on Rotary International, I heard our incoming governor discuss the case and he said, Rotary International will appeal to the United States Supreme Court. And we have every reason to believe in our way. I didn't think that the Supreme Court wanted to hear an issue about women in the service club. I knew about the Supreme Court with, with Roe versus Wade, a case that's really up for consideration again in the Supreme Court. Interesting, read about that. I also knew about their stance on segregation, the Board of Education, Topeka, Kansas. So, uh, so uh, I listened to what he said. He said, it's just a case of a small club. It's just the mouse that roared. Well, we also made a mouse pin. Yeah, here's our mouse pin. We had a mouse pin with a rotary icon on his back. And I went back to Duarte and I made our club a new banner called the X Rotary Club of Duarte, the mouse that roared. And we looked in the mouse that roared. Well, the Supreme Court, of course, did take the case because as Rotary said, there are 